All right, well, thanks, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Kelly Tack, the National Sales Director at Nucleus, and thank you very much for staying through here for the last presentation on the last day. I'm certainly going to try and make it worth your while. Um, here we go. Okay, Tony, if you would. So today, my plan is... see. Okay. So Nucleus this year has celebrated its 20th year anniversary of being in business and we are one of the leading creators of 3D medical animations and illustrations for hospitals and their agencies and we're one of the largest employers of graduate degreed medical illustrators in the world and I, and I stress graduate degree there meaning that after they've done their undergraduate, they actually go on to additional four years of schooling, uh, sitting side by side with the soon-to-be doctors, working on cadavers, taking gross anatomy, physiology, biology. And the reason why that's important is there, there's certainly a lot of talented artists out there, uh, but the, the experience that they have, the detailed understanding that they have of the science and of the body really was what differentiates their content when they, when they develop it. Okay, so over 1,500 hospitals in the U.S. use some form of Nucleus content right now, whether it be on their websites or in social media or even at point of care. And our award-winning content, it's considered the gold standard in the industry just because, as I mentioned, the level of detail, the accuracy, the cinematic quality, and also the ability to attract viewers. Uh, we also work with some very familiar brands in education and media. As you can see, some, some big publishing companies, some big education, some, some, some big budget uh, websites. But the, the key thing is that you can utilize the same level of high quality content for your own websites to attract more viewers. Okay, so how many of you have a YouTube channel currently? Everybody, I would assume at this point, right. Okay, great. So that's really, again, what I want to focus on mainly today. And a recent study by Google showed that YouTube is highly effective at driving traffic. And I would even say I, I sat in on a presentation at one of the conferences last year where the Google representative spoke and said that more and more people when searching for healthcare related topics are going right to YouTube. They're even bypassing Google now because who wants to read is, is the general consensus. If you can find a video on a related topic, they're actually beginning their search on YouTube. And YouTube is really, it's proven to shown that they're converting people to your websites where they're much more likely to book an appointment. And the same study showed that most patients begin their journey by searching online just for diseases and conditions and symptoms. Uh, you know, so they're really starting for general information. And then you know, they want to find that out first, and then they're looking at about a place for treatment afterwards. So having a YouTube channel with general information helps you to reach patients in that early stage of their journey, in that discovery stage, and then helps them to drive them to your website where they can be converted into appointments. Okay, so what does YouTube know? Uh, what does Nucleus know about YouTube? So I, honestly, I've been with the company a little over three years now, uh, and this was a surprising statistic for me when I first joined here. We launched our channel in 2007, uh, so it's now 10 years, and we have grown to be the number one medical animation channel on YouTube. We have over 300 million views and almost 600,000 subscribers. And just a quick look at some of our own analytics. This is the 30-day graph uh, that shows we average over 110,000 views per day, uh, nearly 4 million views per month, and we add about 16,000 new subscribers each month. So it's our number one lead generator, and honestly, the same principles can apply for you as well. Uh, so people ask, you know, why animations? We certainly have heard a lot about live video, but why animations and not just live video? And really, the honest answer to that is the animations perform much better than plain live videos on the same subjects because the content's more attractive, it's easier to understand, it's not bloody, it's not gory. I mean, I've, I'm still shocked at times when I've heard some of you, I'm sure, have heard the same stories. Surgeons want you to post their actual live footage. And, you know, the idea is it's, you're trying to reduce anxiety in the patients, not generate more anxiety in the patients. So, uh, you know, showing off your handiwork peer-to-peer, -peer, that's great. Patients don't want to see that. All right. 
Oh, so that doesn't mean that the video has to be 100% animation, though. Honestly, the, some of the most effective ones are that use a combination of your own live footage and the medical animations. And this is just a brief look at, you know, our animations do perform better than any of our, our competitors uh, out there, as far as particularly in views and uh, subscribers. So if you're going to utilize animations, certainly we would say use the ones that are the most proven to be the most effective. And honestly, you don't need to have thousands or even hundreds of videos in order to generate significant traffic. Uh, better strategy is to do fewer, higher quality content videos that are relevant to your specific target markets and the, and the areas that you're looking to reach. So for example, you know, if you're looking to reach more patients in cardiology or orthopedics or, or pediatrics or women's health, so you want to have and post videos that are related to those specific areas. I mean, you know best what are the areas that you're looking to target. So focus specifically on those areas to begin with, and certainly. All right, so the fastest and honestly cheapest way for putting animations to use is to utilize our stock animation. And we do have a, uh, an ever-expanding library of stock animations that you're available to use. Um, and what you can do with these is you can really pre-roll, I mean, as simple as pre-rolling in your brand, your logo, your introduction, and then you can post it right away on YouTube or on your website. Now, a common question that we get asked a lot is, well, how do I stand apart on YouTube if I'm going to use your stock animations when maybe my competitor is going to be using stock animation too, right? Fair question, certainly. Uh, and the, really, again, the most effective way to do that is to incorporate it with your own video footage. Again, not only branding and logo and, and call to actions, but with your own physicians, with your own patients, you know, with their own stories. So I'm going to show you some examples of how some of our clients have done that. They were giving me a CAT scan, a chest CAT scan, after seeing that my, my aorta was enlarged. We cut out the ascending aorta. We cut out up to the aortic arch, and sometimes we have to replace the aortic arch. And we replace it with a polyester material called Dacron. We often recommend robotic bypass surgery for our patients who have diabetes and other severe ailments of severe obesity. If you suffer from severe obesity and have been unable to lose weight, we may recommend robotic gastric bypass surgery. Ready, set, go. Knees up, faster, faster. That's it, now we're getting there. I've always had a really active lifestyle. Growing up, I was a three-sport athlete, and then I went on to college, and I played college basketball. My name is Amy Wallace, and I came to Penn Medicine due to severe urinary incontinence. When a patient first comes in to talk about their incontinence, I usually want to gauge how much it's bothering them and how much they're willing to do to change the problem. The autologous sling uses a small bikini incision to harvest fascia, which lines all of our muscles, to be used as the sling. This sling is then placed to support the urethra in a very similar fashion to the way mesh is used, and that helps to prevent urinary leakage. So those three examples showed three different ways that the content can be utilized within your own footage, for example, too. So uh, the first one, I'd say that entire video, which might have been uh, with the Marfan syndrome patient, had about 20 seconds of our animation in it. So they, they talked to the patient. He was explaining what was his situation. They talked to his doctor what they were going to do. And then they just used the animation part of it really to, again, to, to give that level of education. Uh, the robotic surgery doctor, they actually utilized our entire video and then had him do the introduction, which you saw. They removed our narration and had their own physician do the voiceover. So he actually, you know, he spoke through the entire video explaining what you were saying, and then they had a closing call to action for it. And then the third example, as you could tell, was a much more highly uh, produced type of video um, where, again, they only used, you know, they talked about the patient, what she had been experiencing. They talked with her physician about what the procedure and how it was going to give her some relief and used about 15 seconds of animation, and that's all. But it really does make a difference in the, uh, in the viewership that you'll receive. So another way to work with us is to commission Nucleus to create a custom animation, which is an exclusive production that's created to your specifications. So the script development, the storyboard development, everything's done in review with your team, your, your clinicians review on it, they weigh in on it. What are the key learning objectives? What are the key visual objects? So that can be done you know, in, in concert with your team. 
Um, and so, you know, why? Why do patient, Why are some hospitals willing to pay more for a custom animation? And really, it gets back to differentiation on your treatment, on your physicians, on your services, and sometimes to reach a, a far larger uh, patient base. So, for example, some of the, the stills that you see here uh, were done with the Norman Parathyroid Center. And the video that they posted on YouTube has now been translated into seven different languages. And they actually attract um, patients from all around the world to their, to their uh, facility in Florida. So I'm gonna roll you some examples of some of the custom work that we've done as well too. If your baby has hypoplastic left heart syndrome, your doctor may recommend the hybrid stage one approach. The hybrid stage one is the first of three minimally invasive procedures designed to lower the risks associated with traditional open heart surgery. The goal of the hybrid stage one is to improve the blood flow in your baby's body. The procedure is usually performed within the first week of life. The combined surgical and interventional cardiology teams will perform the hybrid stage one procedure. There are four parathyroid glands located behind the thyroid gland. Parathyroid glands monitor and control the amount of calcium in our blood and bones by secreting a hormone called parathyroid hormone, or PTH. Each gland monitors the blood calcium and responds by making more or less PTH hormone. Hyperparathyroidism is a disease that occurs when one of the parathyroid glands develops a tumor. This tumor produces far too much parathyroid hormone, which is released into the bloodstream. If a person has epilepsy, some neurons may fire too rapidly and randomly send many messages at the same time. This overwhelms the brain and causes seizures. To reduce or stop seizures, a pediatric neurosurgeon may perform a two-part surgery. The surgeon will place a grid with electrodes onto the brain. The electrodes will stay on the brain until the second surgery. So again, these are some different examples as to the execution as to why people would want a custom animation. For the first example, Nationwide Children's Hospital, the procedure that, that we worked on with and, are, and are actually are continuing to work with them on is a unique proprietary procedure to them. It's, it's a new diff technique that they've developed that they really wanted to have to explain and that, that they're going to actually you know, use for professional purposes as well. And uh, so you can create something new with us that is very specific to you if it's unique and proprietary or if it's a matter of you have something that you're very focused on that we don't have a current stock animation for, that can be developed in, you know, for, as an example, there's a, a system we work with in Baltimore uh, that had just acquired a large orthopedic practice and they had a lot of foot and ankle specialists and so they were looking for some things on ankle fusion and some other techniques that we didn't currently have. So we worked in conjunction with them to develop them. Again, their review of the script, their review of the storyboard, exactly how they wanted to have it said and what was said. Uh, they then gained you know, extended year use of that video. But the, uh, the idea behind it is we were able to have a lower upfront cost because that's something that's not unique and proprietary to them. People do ankle fusion, obviously, all around the country. So we're able to add that back into our library. So I, I, I refer to that as like a sponsoring cost. You can have it directly done to your specifications and have extended year use of it, but we're gonna have a lower rate to create that product because we know there's the opportunity for us as a licensor of content for recurring revenue. So if we add that into our library, there's other facilities around the country that would make use of that content as well. So we're willing to forego the upfront cost knowing that we can, we can get it on the back end. For Again, for something that's truly custom and that no one else would use, it's a little bit of a different uh, price point. So let's move on. So YouTube tactics, so it's not just enough to post them on YouTube, there are still some things that you and your creative team can do to make them even that much more popular. So let's start with the metadata, uh, like the title, the descriptions, the tags. So load those up with not only the names and the diseases of the conditions themselves, but also common acronyms that are used too. So BPH or AFib or cabbage. You know, some consumers out there are savvy enough to know those are the common terminology. So use those as well too. Uh, so make sure that the patients are able to find them there. 
But be careful not to use too many keywords in the title or it reduces your keyword density. But there is the caveat that if you want to pick up traffic from a very specific geographical region or a particular uh, practice or, or specialty, then you, can, then you can definitely add that as well too. And for conversions, be sure to add link backs. Uh, you know, uh, just a, a link in your hospital's website, as you can see. I don't know if I got the same thing. Anyhow, so you, as you can see, the link back to Nucleus for us, but link that back in the description. So again, it just makes it that much easier for them to come back to your facility. And also use an annotated link at the or an end screen. So for us, that little baby head that you see there, if you were if you were to click on that, it takes you back to the Nucleus site. And one of the things that we found too is that viewers consistently click on animation still more often than just a photograph. Uh, so as you can see some of the examples here, it's the exact same topic, um, but if you look at the stills that they're showing, the photographic stills, because it's, it's all live footage, versus the, the photograph of the animation, uh, the views are, are significantly higher. And, and I think that's just become commonplace for most patients when they're given an option to see the kind of the, the you know, perhaps the procedure room or, or just the talking head of the doctor versus an animation. They do tend to click on the animation much more frequently. And then you want to think about yourself as almost like uh, you're launching a TV station where you want to produce new content on a regular basis. So maybe you start out with once a week and then you move out to twice a month and then you get up to once a month and you're organically growing more subscribers over time that way too. People understand if they're looking for content, the more you continue to post fresh content, the more they see that it is relevant, it's a channel that's being attended to uh, and that they know they can come back and, and find, continue to find more good content. And, but lastly, if it's not performing well, tweak some things. I mean, it's all an experiment. I mean, sometimes slow moving, you know, slow viewership on videos, just changing a title or an image uh, can really make a difference. It can make them things take off. So one of the experiences that we've had with some of our customers doing this, um, most see those that use, these are the YouTube channels of some of our clients. They see the animation, uh, the videos with animations, they tend to organically rise to the top percentage of all, that they're, of, all of their YouTube videos. And you can see some more examples here. They tend to rise up always to be some of the most viewed. So it, looking back, why is Nucleus a great partner for you? So our experience as the leading channel, uh, you know, medical animations on YouTube, means we have the content and the skill set, the ability to help you have a high performing channel as well. And you know, more YouTube traffic ultimately results in more website traffic for you, which ultimately we hope leads to more appointments and conversions for you as well too. Uh, as I just mentioned, more appointments there too. So price, what does it cost? Common question, I get it all the time, as you would suspect. So stock animations, not gonna be much different if any of you use any uh, subscription services, Getty, any kind of rights managed licensed services out there. And it really depends upon how much content you're using. The more content you use, the lower the price point comes down. How many facilities, you know, some of you, if you have more than one location, whether it be hospitals, you know, the amount of uh, clinics or the amount of practices, how much are you using it? You can amortize that cost out over the, over the different facilities. And custom animation, it is based on the complexity of it. That, that definitely requires a discovery call uh, you know, with you, with your, your leading subject matter expert, determine what is the scope, what is the amount of research that needs to be done by our team in the, in the writing and the, in the development stage, and then what is the production time. But even then, we still do produce things at lower than the average cost. And the reason for that is we really want to find, you know, this is a large market that really hasn't, is still slowly embracing, let's say, the use of animations. And we know from experience, if a lot of people will start out by using just one with us and say, hey, you know what, that really got great results. Or how many of you, uh, you know, find that you do one particular initiative for a service line, what well, the other service lines all say, right? Where's mine? Why can't I have that as well too? So we're happy to get things in your hands at a, at a low cost because we know it's gonna organically grow your relationship with us over time as well. So my last uh, video clip here, I'm gonna show you some examples of uh, testimonials, some of our clients and physicians that have utilized our animations and the experience that they've had with it. We can tell that we're increasing the number of patients that we're seeing on a daily basis, and we're getting fewer callbacks, so the nursing staff is being much more helpful with seeing patients that are in the office rather than spending time on the phone. But by and large, the patients come in, they have fewer questions, we don't have the callbacks, much better educated on exactly what's gonna be done surgically. And for the non-surgical patients, they have a much better understanding of why we're having to protect them, why they're wearing a brace, why they're doing the rehab. So overall, it's been a much better patient education. And from a physician's point of view, I think we're getting better results because the patients truly understand what's going on. 
If you add, from a surgical standpoint, if you add the amount of money that the video costs per year versus the amount of patients that you see because you've become more effective and more efficient, I would say the videos probably pay for themselves after about two or three patient visits. The end result is a beautiful animation that's been viewed many millions of times in seven languages. So we really are accomplishing our goal, which is to teach the world about this disease. We're reaching many people who have nothing to do with our practice. We're just, we're just enhancing the education of patients and doctors worldwide. I've enjoyed all of my interactions with Nucleus Medical. Uh, they've been insightful. Uh, they've been very timely in their efforts. Um, when we, you know, obviously there's iterations in the development of these animations. And every time that we came back to them, they were receptive to our reviews and really sort of intellectualized those comments and then put them into action into making this even better than we could have imagined. So the first thing I'll say about that, that really is that doctor's office. That wasn't our camera. He does have purple bookshelves in, in his office. So that, that's not just a video. But really, I mean, the point there is, um, you know, the point there is that the physicians like it because uh, we've heard on many occasions them say, you know, I say the same thing over and over 20, 30 times a day when I'm visiting patients. Uh, and the nursing staff will say, you know, when we bring someone in, if I'm able to sit them down and watch and have them watch a video, I'm able to move and, and do other things and then come back to them. Uh, the doctors have said that they save between five to seven minutes per patient just because they've established that baseline of knowledge and had some of their basic questions answered before they talk with the doctor. So, you know, five to seven minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about that per day, per week, per month, per year, that gives them a lot of time back. And that time could be spent either seeing additional patients or for those, you know, certain patients that do require more time spent with them, they have that, and, and that's really critical to them as well. And even in, in some of the, uh, the larger systems that we work with, you know, there's always the, uh, in turking, you know, talking with the nursing staff, they were very frank and honest about it, and they'll say, you know, sometimes I'll leave out of, out of talking with the patients afterwards, and I'll say, oh, I forgot to mention that. I should, I should have told her that. Or there'll be, you know, nurses on the same floor that explain things in different ways. They might just use a little different language or just, or, um, you know, different terminology. And the idea of using a video is it's consistency. The same message is given to every patient. There's never any question about did they hear this. Um, and again, it's told in the same manner. So the, you know, the, uh, the, not only the end result of the patient being ed better educated, which enables them to understand their condition better and maybe manage their own self-care better, uh, and which would, we would hope to lead to better outcomes. And also, again, the ability to be confident that, okay, I know what this procedure has in store for me. I've seen it, I know it, you know, my doctor's told me it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be fine, and they gain the confidence to go ahead and move forward with that procedure. So, uh, any questions? No? All right. Yes? No? All right. Well, thanks very much. Uh, my contact info is there. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time, ask any questions, be happy to send you some information, uh, links to review our content. And uh, thanks again. Appreciate you being here on the last day. Scott, thank you. Um, I hope to talk to you all again soon. Thanks very much.